Hancock adventure story for you from that famous talking cereal, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, pop. Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Wires to the West. Want to play a little game? Just fill in the missing word. Ready? Here's the first one. Tom, Dick, and... Harry, that's right. And here's another. Red, white, and... Sure, blue's the answer. Now the last one. Snap, crackle, and... Ha <laughs> ha, who could miss that one? Snap, crackle, and pop. Everybody's favorite sound at breakfast. That's what Rice Krispies say when you pour on milk or cream to let you know how crisp they are. Rice Krispies, the only talking cereal in the whole wide world. <laughs> There was plenty of fighting and adventure in the winning of the Old West, but the big job was one of building railroads, towns, telegraph lines across the wilderness. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles helped with this building. In one case, even their lives were at stake as they battled for wires to the West. with lead flying over my head. Seems like I spend more time laying on my stomach than I do standing on my feet. You'd better stay right where you are for a while, Jingles. Those jaspers up there on that hill are real good shots. I ain't moving, Bill. But I sure would like to know who those trigger-happy coyotes are and what they've got against us. I don't think they've got anything against us. They're just shooting to keep the crew from working on the new telegraph line. Well, they're sure doing it. There's a workman hiding behind every rock on the desert. Dad, blame it, that was too darn close. Cut it out, Jingles. You can't hit him with a six-gun from here. I don't care, Bill. Anytime I get shot at as much as I have today, I'm going to shoot back. Looks like they're through for this time. They're climbing on the horses and hightailing it for the canyon. Shoot and run, shoot and run. That's what they do every day. Why don't they come on down out of the hills and fight? They don't want to fight. They just want to slow down the work as much as they can. Now, come on, let's see if anybody got hurt today. Well, if they didn't, it'll be the first time. There's been one man killed and 12 wounded since the line started west from Red Rock. Yeah, I know it. we got to find some way to put a stop to it. Well, here comes Pat Hardy. He looks plenty worried. He should be. He took a contract to build a line from Red Rock to Calico Mountain in 30 days. He's got 10 days left and 25 miles still to go, and he's a week behind schedule. Yeah, howdy, Pat. How'd you come out this time? Well, howdy me, Jingles. Jake Carey's got a broken shoulder from the first slug that come off the hill. And you two brave lawmen were digging yourselves a hole behind the biggest rock in sight. Well, what else could we do, you old goat? Wouldn't help your old telegraph line a bit if we stepped out in the open and got a hole blowed in ourselves. Take it easy, you two. This is no time for fighting among ourselves. It's time for somebody to be fighting them bushwhackers. They're bleeding me right out of the best men in my crew. Well, what do you expect us to do? Chase them up those steep, rocky cliffs? If we ever got to the top, they'd have a five-mile start on us. And they're playing the cards. They pick the time and the place to start shooting every day. And we can't guard all of both ridges without a company of soldiers. I know that, Bill. I'm sorry I sounded off, but I'm almost whipped. If I don't finish the job on time, I'll lose my shirt on the contract. And my men are getting so jumpy, they're threatening not to come to work tomorrow. Yeah, well, that's bad, Pat. And we'll do whatever we can. Maybe Bill can think of something. He's pretty good at thinking. Even better than I am. We'll sure try to get you some action before tomorrow, Pat. Well, come on, Jingles. Let's get Jake into town so the doctor can work on his shoulder, and then we're going to get busy. Well, what are we doing over on this side of town, Bill? Following a hunch, Jingles. All right, but... Where are we going to follow it to? Just to that big building up ahead of us. We're going to pay a call on the Acme Construction Company. Who's that? And what have they got to do with Pat Hardy getting his telegraph line built? I don't know. But Acme built the line as far west as Red Rock. Then lost a contract to Pat for the next section. Who, Chuck? Who? Oh, Joker, who? 
You figure maybe the Acme folks are a little mad about losing the contract and might be taking it out on Pat and his crew, huh? Could be, but I'm not figuring anything until I know for sure. All right, let's go in. Uh, who runs this outfit, Bill? Never met him. A bunch of construction men from back east somewhere. Quite a place they got here. Must be a pretty big outfit. Oh, that's funny. Doesn't look like there's anybody here. Hmm. Probably haven't got back from shooting up Pat's crew. Don't say that till we can prove something, partner. <laughs> Look who's here. Who's that? Who's the Bill? Somebody's laughing at us. <laughs> Hello, stupid. Who's stupid? Where are you, anyhow? Simmer down, Jingles. It's only a big parrot. Where? Oh, yeah. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Polly want a cracker? <laughs> Oh, soak your head. Now, looky here. You're too doggone smart for your own feathers. Don't get into an argument with him, Jingles. I don't think you can win it. Jingles. Jingles. Ah! That's me, Jingles Jones. What about it? Jingles is stupid. Jingles is stupid. <laughs> I am not stupid. Bill, if this bird don't stop insulting me, I'm going to have myself a big dish of fricasseed parrot for dinner tonight. Ah. Jingles is stupid. <laughs> I ain't gonna stand for it. Polly want a nice forty-five caliber slug in his ribs? Put up that six-gun, Jingles. Oh, but Bill. Uh, oh, stop worrying. Jingles and Wild Bill Hickle can't catch us, can't catch us. The heck we can. Did you hear that? Sure, what about it? He said Jingles and Wild Bill can't catch us. Hey, that's right. But neither one of us said anything about Wild Bill. He learned that speech from somebody else. <laughs> Wild Bill Hickok. Stop worrying. He'll never catch us. <laughs> <laughs> Slim, I've got a puzzler for you. I heard a cowpoke say that he thought Kellogg's Rice Krispies were nickel-plated. Now, what in tarnation could he mean by that? Why, anyone knows those crispy, light brown puffs of rice are not nickel-plated. Why, <laughs> uh, hobble your tongue there, Charlie. That's just about the kindest words a cowpoke could say about rice krispies. When anyone out west calls something nickel-plated... It's his way of saying it's the best. Oh, well, and that explains it. I guess I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are nickel-plated myself. They sure are good tasting. And crisp? Why, as soon as you pour milk or cream over those pretty little morsels of rice, they speak right up with their snap, crackle, pop to let you know how crisp they are. And Wranglers, when you hear those three little words, snap, crackle, pop, you know those Rice Krispies are just as crisp just as fresh as the day they tumble out of Kellogg's big toasting ovens in Battle Creek. So why not pour yourself a big bowl full of Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the breakfast cereal that speaks your language tomorrow morning, sure. And if there ain't a box of Kellogg's Rice Krispies on your chuck wagon shelf right now, better ask Mom for more. Tell her you want the only talking cereal in the whole wide world, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. <laughs> When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles went to the office of the Acme Construction Company, they hoped to find out who was making war on the crews putting up the new telegraph line. Instead, they found a talking parrot with some startling information. Don't worry about Wild Bill and Jingles. <laughs> it ain't funny, you rainbow-colored buzzard. Well, who's been talking to you about Wild Bill and Jingles? Wild Bill and Jingles. Wild Bill and Jingles. <laughs> He's told us all he can, Jingles. And it's enough to make me think the Acme Construction Company knows something about the war on the telegraph workers. Come on, let's get out of here before somebody shows up. Well, why are we leaving, Bill? Aren't we going to take somebody to jail or poke somebody in the snoot? That'll come later, maybe. Right now, I want to do a little checking on these construction men. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Sorry I wasn't in the office to meet you when you walked in. Who's this, Bill? And my name is Bates, president and general manager of Acme Construction. Howdy, Bates. My name's Hickok. Marshal Wild Bill Hickok, that is. I'm his deputy Jingles. Oh, I've seen you both before. Glad to meet you. Were you uh, looking for something particular in the office or just prowling around? We weren't prowling. We were here on business. We are looking for something, Bates. The answers to a few questions. Maybe we can get them from you. Oh? 
I don't see where me or my company should interest you, Hickok. We built the line as far west as Red Rock, and Pat Hardy is working on west from there. We're temporarily out of business. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, maybe you're trying very hard to get back into business. What do you mean by that? He means that somebody's given Pat Hardy's crew all kinds of trouble, so he won't be able to finish by the time his contract calls for. What are you doing, accusing me? I'm not accusing anybody. I just want to find out what you know about it. You've come to the wrong place, Hickok. I'm not answering any questions, so just take your big deputy and get out. You're acting mighty. Get, get out. Look out, Bill. I've got him. You're having good. Me? I think maybe I have. Watch him, Bill. He's tricky. <laughs> but I'm tricky like this. I know a few tricks myself like this. Ooh, wee. He sure started that fight in a hurry, but he finished it just as fast. Flat on his back. I don't know what he was so mad about. I wasn't even sure he was our man. What do you think now? Well, he seems pretty guilty to me. Now all we have to do is prove it. Who's afraid of wide bill and jingles? <laughs> you better be afraid of us, you flying Christmas tree. I'll bet your boss is afraid of us now. Or he will be when he wakes up. He's waking up now. Let's help him up, partner. Oh, all right, but I'd just as soon leave him there. Come on, please. You get up and answer a few questions. Yeah. You're wasting your time, Hickok. You want answers? Get them to your friend Pat Hardy of the telegraph company. I'm not talking. Mm, I guess that's what we'll have to do. Come on, Jingles. Yeah, I still think I can make this buzzard talk if you want me to. Never mind, Jingles. We'll go talk to the telegraph company. And then I've got a hunch we'll be coming back here. Hit the road, you bum. Oh, shut up, you ah. featherhead. I think the parrot's got a good idea. Why don't you climb any of your saddles and hit the road? Look out for Wild Bill Hickok. Yeah, Parrot makes a lot of sense, Bates. Just told you to look out for Wild Bill Hickok. Oh, you hammerhead. Hold it. Slash, come on out here. What's all the yelling about, Bates? You look like somebody's chasing you. Somebody is chasing me, and you too, Wild Bill Hickok. Hickok? I thought you weren't worried about him. I wasn't, as long as he and Jingles were just guarding the line crew. But I just caught the two of them snooping around our office. They find out anything? I don't think so, but they're mighty suspicious. Now they've gone to the telegraph company to find out about Hardy's contract. One look at that piece of paper, and they'll have everything figured out in a hurry. That's a tough break. We just about had Hardy's crew ready to quit. Well, I ain't given up yet. It's a big, fat, juicy contract waiting for us if Hardy doesn't finish the job on time, and I'm going to see he doesn't make it. What about Hickok? I don't want that star packer riding my trail. He's dynamite. We'll get him and that deputy of his off our trail right now. Saddle your horse, bring a rifle. Hickok can make trouble for us if he's dead. to know is what's in that contract with Pat Hardy, Mr. Sharp. Well, there's plenty in the contract, my boy. Takes a good lawyer to write a good contract, I always say. The question is, who is a contract good for? A good question, Marshal Hickok. Glad you asked it, mighty glad. Shows you appreciate the fine points of the law. Yes, sir. When E.B. Sharp draws up a contract, you can be sure the fine points. Uh, Sharp, fine points, uh, that's sort of a joke, you know. Yeah, I know, but I don't know what sort. Now, how about letting Bill look over some of the fine points in that contract? Especially what happens if Hardy doesn't get the job finished in time. A fine point, very fine point. I protected the telegraph company 100%. They can't lose no matter what happens. Just what does a contract say? Well, uh, now let's see. That's paragraph 23, clause B. Right here somewhere. Ooh, look at the size of that contract. Well, if he can't win a case in court with it, he can at least beat somebody over the head with it till they give up. Have to cover everything, my boy. Takes big contract. Oh, oh here we are. Uh, time limit. Whereas the party of the first part... Agrees to complete construction on or before the above date, and whereas the party of the second part, here and after referred to as company, is held to be not liable for any uh, bailment, 
forfeiture. Never mind all the high-sounding, razzle-dazzle words. Now, just tell me in plain language what happens to Pat Hardy if he doesn't get the dad blame wires strung from here to Calico Mountain in 30 days. Well, if he doesn't make it in time, he doesn't collect one single red cent. You mean all his work and expense will be for nothing? That's right. (laughs) According to the contract... Second lowest bidder will take over and finish the work, and the entire fee will be paid to him. You do write a good contract, Mr. Sharp. Thank you. For the second lowest bidder. You mind telling me who that is? Why, not at all. It's a very reliable firm. It's done a lot of work for the telegraph company in the past. Don't tell me. think I can guess. I think I can, too. The Acme Construction Company. That's right. But uh, how'd you know? They're the only ones that have a gang of gun slicks and the fine points of the law both working for them. Bill, look out. There they are. That dead blame bushwhackers. Now, just a minute. This sort of thing isn't covered by the contract. You better crawl behind that contract and pull in your ears. Those gents with that rifle don't care about the fine points of the law. Have you ever put your ear right on a rail, Charlie, and knew a train was on the track long before you could even see it? Well, now, I can't say that I have, Slim. Uh, how far off can you hear one coming? Oh, you can hear them rumbling down the tracks miles off. Of course, when you hear that rumbling noise getting louder, you know that's a signal to get your ear off the track pronto. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, now, partners, when you hear this signal, snap, crackle, pop, you know there's some mighty good eating heading your way. That's right, Charlie, especially when you put your favorite right fruit or berries canned, fresh, or frozen, over those little puffs of rice. Wranglers, why don't you pour some milk or cream over a big bowl full of Kellogg's Rice Krispies tomorrow at sunup? See if they don't talk your language. You know that snap, crackle, pop talk of theirs lets you know how crisp they are. And spoonful after spoonful, right down to where you see the bottom of your cereal bowl showing through, Rice Krispies stay crisp, just the way you like them. So why not take a peek in your chuck wagon cupboard as soon as the show's over? See if you got enough Rice Krispies on hand for breakfast tomorrow. You never know when someone might have gobbled up the last delicious bowl of Kellogg's Rice Krispies before you. Ask Mom for Rice Krispies, the only talking cereal in the whole wide world. Just as Wild Bill and Jingles found out the details of the contract for building the telegraph line, a shot smashed through the window of the lawyer's office and a gun battle was on. Outside was Bates and his hired gunman with rifles. Inside were Wild Bill and Jingles with six guns. Bill, they're running for their horses. Let's go after them. If they didn't bushwhack us here, the next place they'll try is a crew that string the telegraph line. Oh, what do you figure they'll do? Anything to stop Hardy from finishing his contract on time. Blow up the supply yard or gun down the crew. Bates is a kind that won't stop at anything. Man, it looks like it's up to us to stop him. That's about the size of it. Steady, Buckshot. Hold, hold still now, Joker. Well, I hope the folks that send telegrams realize how much trouble it is to put up them wires. Get on that, Buckshot. Go, boy. Jump, Joker. We got riding to do. Ho! Oh. telegraph line. No, they're going to the Acme Construction Company office. Are we going to follow them there? Sure thing. If the evidence in that contract, we can prove that they're the ones that are doing the firing on the line crew. Well, what about their firing at us? We can get them for that, too. All right, pull in here, Jingles. Pull, 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 Jingles. Keep your guns ready. They know we're on the trail. And they probably got their guns ready, too. I didn't think they'd let us walk in like this. I thought they'd be shooting at us before now. I suppose you're disappointed because there's no lead flying around our ears. No, just just surprised. All right, open the door. It's locked. We'll open it anyway. That's my specialty. Now just stand back out of the way. <laughs> you're getting real good at smashing down doors, partner. All right, watch it. Uh, Bill, there's nobody here. <laughs> Nobody here. Nobody here. Oh, I forgot all about you, you old featherhead. Looks like they went right on through and out the back way. Hey, there's a box of dynamite with a few sticks gone. Yeah, and they broke open a box of cartridges. Hey, looked like they were loading up for a real war. They must be heading for the line camp. Come on, we got to stop them. Look out. 
Look out! Hey, that bird got him down, Slash! Here we go! Stay under cover, Slash! They stick their heads out, let him have it. It's Bates and one of his gun slicks. They were hiding in here waiting to bushwhack us. We almost did. It's a good thing that parrot yelled. Where are they now? Somewhere behind those boxes. They're trying to get out the back door. There they are. Did you get him? I hit one of them in the shoulder. I think Bates is in the back corner. Yeah, keeping quiet and waiting for another shot at us. Come on, give up, Bates. We got you cornered. Come on in and get me. All right, we will. Come on, Jingles. We were just asking for a slug in the ribs, Bill. And I guess we got to do it. Drop it, Bates. Your partner's got a slug in his shoulder, and you'll have one in your middle if you don't let go of that gun. Ah! Bill just told you what would happen. No, you had to go and find out the hard way. You and your whole gang are through, Bates. All right, time up, Jingles. Then we'll round up the rest of the gang, including that crooked lawyer, Sharp. Well, was he in on this, too? Sure he was. He wrote a contract that would have given these crooks all the money without doing any of the work on the telegraph line. Well, you're pretty smart, Hickok. Hickok is smart. Woo! Wild Bell and Jingles. Woo! Well, how do you like that? Last time we were here, he was calling us stupid. Hey, Bill, you suppose that parrot switched over to our side? <laughs> I think he's been on our side all along. He was the one that made us suspicious of Bates in the first place. And he just yelled, look out in time to keep us from getting shot. Hey, that's right. Well, Polly want a cracker? Oh, soak your head. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't like crackers, Jingle. Well, all right, Polly. I'll take you along with us to supper tonight. You can order anything you like. Anything from bird seed to apple pie. Because tonight, the treat's on me. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Thanks for being with us today, folks. Andy and I'll be back your way again on Monday. You bet we will. And believe me, we've got a rip-roaring Wild Bill Hickok story you won't want to miss. Join us, will you? So long, kids. See you Monday. <laughs> Partners, they say variety is the spice of life. And you know, that's especially true at breakfast. So why not ask Mom to rope you a Kellogg's Variety Pack? You can't miss with this pack. It gives you ten generous individual boxes of your favorites. There's that Snap Crackle Pop cereal, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the flakes that taste best to more people, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, new Ready Sweetened Favorites, and several others. So when you're looking for variety, ask Mom for Variety Pack. Kellogg's Variety Pack. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Tony Barrett, Charlie Long, Tyler McVeigh, and Dusty Walker. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, reminding you to listen again on Monday, same time, same station, for another adventure of Wild Bill Hickok! <laughs>